A pleasant day, STEM learners. This is Sir Peter, your pre-calculus teacher. So we are done with week number three about the domain and the range and the graphs of the circular functions. This time, we will exemplify our discussion by discussing the amplitude and the periods of circular functions. So at this end of the video lesson, you should be able to illustrate the amplitude and the period of circular functions. Let's start. Let us consider y is equal to a sine bx and the equation y is equal to a cosine bx. Let's have this given example. Using a table of values from 0 to 2 pi, we can sketch the graph of y is equal to 3 sine x and compare it to the graph of y is equal to sine x. So notice that we now have a value for A, wherein A is equal to 3. And this is how the graph would look like. What do you notice? So using the table of values, let us now compare the graph of y is equal to 3 sine x to the original graph, which is y is equal to sine x. Now, for instance, if x is um, pi over 2 or 90 degrees, then y becomes equal to 1. But if uh, we consider um, y is equal to 3 sine x, then y now becomes 3. So notice that these points are what I am referring to. So from 1, it is transformed to Three. So that is how we interpret it in the graph. So the vertices of the graph of the sine function move from one to going to the coordinate three. So therefore, the period is the same. The x-intercepts and the domains are all the same, but they differ in terms of the range. So what is the range of the values? Range now, instead of negative one, three, becomes negative 3, 3. So in general, the graphs of y is equal to a sine x and y is equal to a cosine x, if a is greater than 0, will have the same shape. So it will have the same um, domain, it will have the same, but they will have different range value. Now, if it is a is less than zero, then it goes across the x-axis, then both the range of y is equal to a sine x and y is equal to a cosine x will be the absolute values of each. So we have the negative of the absolute value of a and the absolute value of a. So if a is five, then it becomes negative five, then five. So those will be the values of the range. But the minimum value, the uh, maximum value um, does not change as well as the um, value of um, the amplitude. So in the graphs of y is equal to a sine x and y is equal to a cosine x, the number, the absolute value of a is what we refer to as the amplitude. So it dictates the height of the curve. No? And it tells whether the graph will shrunk vertically or will it will stretch vertically. Okay, so A, if A is less than one, then the graph will shrunk vertically, meaning it is below one. And if A, the amplitude is greater than one, then the graph will stretch vertically just like what happened to three. Now, let us consider the values of y is equal to sine 2x uh, on 0 to 2 pi regions or 0 to 360 degrees. So observe that the given angle x is now doubled. No? So we added a value here, which is 2. And let us see how the values would change. So these are the table of values. When we look at the graph, then observe what happens to the graph of y 
is equal to sine x. So the black part indicates the original graph, no? which is y is equal to sine x. But what happened when we put a 2 there? Notice that the period changes value. Okay? So based from the figure, notice that y is equal to sine 2x have generated diff a similar periodic value for y is equal to sine x. But for x now, values needed to be between 0 and pi. So instead of the original 0 to 2 pi, the periodic changes is now from 0 to pi. So look at this one. So from 0 to pi. So this is now the new period. Okay, Instead of having the original period 0 to 2 pi. So based on the table of the values and the graph, it is expected that the values of y is equal to sine 2x will repeat after 180 degrees or after um, pi region units. Okay, So therefore, the period of y is equal to sine 2x is equal to pi. So here is the rule. If b is not equal to 0, then both the y is equal to sine bx and y is equal to cosine bx will have a formula for the period, which is 2 pi over b. So if b is within 0 and 1, then the graph will stretch horizontally. And if b is greater than 1, then the graph will shrink horizontally. So notice that the graph of y is equal to 2x is greater than 1. So therefore, the graph, which is the red part, shrunk vertically, I mean horizontally. So remember the formula, it is 2 pi over the absolute value of b. Let's have illustrative examples. Determine the period and the amplitude of the following. So again, the period is represented by small b, okay, and the amplitude is a. So let's have the first example. y is equal to 2 sine 4x. So our amplitude is 2, and our period is b is 4. So for the amplitude, we need to get the absolute value of a. So that is absolute value of 2 is 2. For the period, we use 2 pi, which is 360 degrees, over um, the absolute value of b. So that is 2 pi over the absolute value of 4. So we have pi over 2. So therefore, the graph will change every 90 degrees. Okay, So that is from 0 to 90. Uh, the period will change. And then notice that 2 is the height of the curve. So that is why the graph looks like this. Okay? The range value is 2, negative 2. Next, what if the given is y is equal to negative 3 cosine x over 2? So the given is a is equal to negative 3 and b is 1 half. So for the amplitude, we have the absolute value of negative 3, so that will be 3. So that will be the height of the graph. Then for the period, we have 2 pi divided by the absolute value of 1 half. So we get the reciprocal of 1 half, that is 2. So the period will now be 4 pi. And look at how the graph will change. So negative 3 is represented here. Look at that one. That is the value or the height of the graph below since it is negative. And then for the period, okay, the period change from 0 to 4 pi. So this is where the graph starts and this is where the graph ends up to the period 4 pi. And it will continuously repeat 
periodically based from the computation of a period. Now, let uh, y is equal to um, 1 half sine um, negative 2x over 3. So our given is 1 half and b is negative 2 thirds. So to solve for the amplitude, we get the absolute value of a. So that is equal to 1 half. And the absolute value of 1 half is 1 half. For the period, we have 2 pi over the absolute value of b. So we have 2 pi over the absolute value of negative 2 thirds. We get the reciprocal of 2 thirds, that is 3 halves. So it's already positive. So we have 2 pi times 3 halves. So that will be 3 pi. So periodically, our graph will repeat every 3 pi. So look at this graph. So observe that the graph's um, height is now one half, okay? So you could see that is also our range and below is our um, range, which is negative one half. And then for the period, so it starts from zero going to three pi. So this is the illustration. Then periodically, it will repeat again the same values. So based from the period 3, pi. Let's have another example. The given um, function is y is equal to negative 5 thirds sine of 3x. So the amplitude is 5 over 3. The period is 2 pi over 3. So the given negative pi over um, 5 over 3 and b is 3, we get the absolute value of a. So the answer is 5 over 3. For the period, we have 2 pi over the absolute value of b. So we have 2 pi over the absolute value of 3. So the answer is 2 pi over 3. Very easy. Next, y is equal to negative 2 cosine negative 3 x over 4. Amplitude is 2. The period is 8 pi over 3. So how did we get that one? Given a is negative 2, b is negative 3 4. The amplitude is absolute value of a, so that is positive 2. For the period, we have 2 pi over b. So we have 2 pi over the absolute value of negative 3 4. We get the reciprocal. That is four thirds. So we multiply, it's already positive. So two pi times four over three will be eight pi over three. So I hope um, you learned something from our discussion for today. So we are now done with week number four. So for next week, we will be talking about week five, the trigonometric identities. So here are the corrections for week number three, item number 25 to 26. You change the choices. We have letter A, 7 pi over 2. Letter B, negative 7 pi over 2. Letter C, 4 pi over 7. And letter D, negative 4 pi over 7. So reminders, the date of submission for the Read and Works number three is on December 20, 2021, Monday via Google Form. But for those um, who are submitting hard copies, you will submit them tomorrow, um, Friday, December 17. In answering the Google Forms for the written works, make sure that the email you've encoded is correct so that you will surely receive the Google Form together with the score once returned. So this is already the end of my discussion. Again, this is Sir Peter, your pre-calculus teacher.